So the first problem is the following. We have 10,000 digits. And uh, so it means that we have elements from the following set. 0, 1, 2, 3, 9, right? All the possible digits. Uh, uh, so we are choosing 10,000 digits from this set. Then find an approximate value of the probability. So what is the probability that the number 9, so if we say that Xi is the number of times that 9 was selected, then we need to, say, to find the probability that Xi is uh, uh, greater or equal than 940 and uh, 1060. Okay, again, so we have 10 elements here. Let's call this set A. We have the set A. And 10,000 times, we're going to pick one element, right? So the first time we pick, I don't know, zero, then three, then nine, then and so on. And at the end, we get 10,000 10, digits. We need to find the probability that we pick nine, uh, well, uh, between uh, 940 and 1,060 times, okay? So how do we do that? Any idea? Yes. Okay. So, of course, we, we want to apply here the central limit theorem. Okay. And uh, th there's actually something that I didn't uh, tell you that we didn't discuss. And this is the um, Moivre Laplace theorem. This is something that we did not discuss, right? But that in every uh, course of probability theory, you can find, and this is just the central limit theorem when we are talking about the binomial, the, sorry, yes, when we are talking about, so in the central limit theorem, we have a sequence Xi1, Xi2, Xi n, right? And we say that the distribution of, of of, uh, of Xi is any, right? So the distribution of these uh, random variables is any distribution, right? But if you talk about these uh, random variables and they have Bernoulli distribution with parameter P, then you will get the Moivre Laplace theorem. And it's exactly the same to the central limit theorem, but just if you talk about the Bernoulli distribution. So, the, so somehow, this is not exactly like that, but somehow the Moivre Laplace theorem is a result from the central limit theorem. Okay? It's the same, we did not discuss it, and the way to prove it, anyway, the way to prove it is using the um, Stirling, Stirling's approximation. Do you know what is that? No? So that n factorial is about the square root of 2 pi n and e to the is e over n to the n no you haven't used that okay well this is what we use to prove this so somehow we can prove this we could have uh, proved this like at the beginning of the course because it's all, everything that we need is this and that's it but to prove the central limit theorem, we use the characteristic function. And of course, to get to the characteristic function is a long way, right? So that is why uh, we didn't talk about the, the, this theorem. This is just like a, a special case, let's say like that, of the central limit theorem. Anyway, what do we have in this case? And why, why I'm talking about this? Because what is Xi? So Xi, is the number of times that the number nine was selected. So we can, uh, what, how many trials uh, do we have? We have 10,000, right? 
So we can say that this is psi 1 plus psi 2 plus psi 10,000. And who can tell me what is psi i in this case? So what does it represent? What do you think? If, if psi is the number of times that we get 9, number of 9s, then what is psi i? For, I mean, psi i is every, each, each of these psi that we have here. Yes, an indicator random variable. So this is one. Creo que no te entiendo. This is one if we have, uh, so if uh, we pick the first digit, right? So psi one is one if the first digit is nine, right? And zero otherwise. So let's find the, uh, and this is the same for every i. All that I have to do is to change this, this one here by i. i here and i. And there. Right? So, and I can get at the end the number of nines. Now, um, what is the expected value of this random variable? Well, yeah. What is the expected value of this uh, random variable? So we have two options here. We have the first option is, uh, so one, so it's one. And what is the probability that psi i is one? So what is the probability that we have 10 digits, we pick one and, and this is nine? One digit, right? And this digit is nine. I mean, one over 10, right? So this is just one, one over 10 uh, plus zero, right? So what is the distribution of psi i has Bernoulli distribution with parameter one, one over 10, right? That's it. Now, if, if we know this, then we can find the expected value of psi. Right, let's find the expected value of psi over here. What is the expected value of psi? So we have. Uh huh. Yes. So. So, yeah, so, so, okay. The expected value of psi is the sum from one to 1,000, 10,000, sorry, of the expected value of psi i, right? What is the expected value of psi i? It's one over 10, right? Then the expected value of psi is, no, 10,000 over 10, right? So, ten, so 1,000. So this is the expected value of psi. Now, what is the variance of, of, of psi? We know that this is, so since uh, psi i, so psi 1, psi 2, psi 10,000, they are independent, right? So this is the sum of from 1 to 10,000 of the variance of psi i. And the variance of psi i, since we know that that uh, psi i has Bernoulli distribution, and we know that the variance of psi i is p times one minus p, right? Uh, then the variance of psi i in this case is what? The variance of psi i is p is one over 10, right? And one, one minus p is nine over 10, so this is nine over 100. Yes, and so we need, so this is going to be how much? So 10,000 over 100, so this is 100, right? Uh, times nine, so this is 900. Okay, so we found the variance of psi and we found the expected value of psi. Why do we need this? Because now we need to apply the central limit theorem. How are we going to do that? Well, this is what we need to find, okay? 
this is a, exactly the same of writing the following. We have xi minus the expected value of xi over uh, the square root of the variance of xi. If we do this over here, then we need to do the same to this side and to this side, right? So it means that we have uh, uh, 940 minus the expected value, which is 1,000 over the square root of 900. And here we have uh, 1,060 minus 1,000. Oh, I can do this. Over the square root of 900. So, what do we have here? What is this? Uh, 1,060 minus, minus, this is 2, right? All of this is 2, and this is? Minus 2. Right? Great. So, what do we get? We get that all of this is the probability that minus 2 is less or equal than this, this random variable, xi minus expected value of xi over the square root of the variance of xi, and less or equal than 2. Now, we need to apply the central limit theorem. What do we know about the central limit theorem? We know that if xi is xi 1 plus xi 2 plus xi n, Right? Sorry, why do I have? Right? And xi1, xi2, xi n are identically independent, identically distributed random variables. Then I know that this random variable, xi minus the expected value of xi over the square root of the variance of xi, tends in distribution, convergence in distribution to eta where eta has a normal distribution with parameters 0 and 1, right? So what does it mean that this thing converges in distribution to this one? It means that the probability distribution of this random variable converges to the probability distribution of this one. So the probability that this is less or equal than x converges to the probability that eta is less or equal than x. Okay? So, if we need to find this, we can find this for eta. Okay? And uh, we can use it here. So, what do we need to find over here? So, this converges to the probability that minus 2, less or equal than eta, less or equal than 2. Where eta has a standard normal distribution. So what is this? This is, uh, how do we find this uh, probability? This is the, uh, the probability distribution function of eta in the point 2, sorry, 2 here, Right? So the probability that eta is less or equal than 2 minus the probability that eta is less or equal than minus 2. Yes? Yeah? So. This is the uh, density function of eta. We know that. Uh, what function is this? Mm. What function is this? If, if we, we have here x, this is 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus x square over 2. See, this, this is the density. The probability that eta is less or equal than 2, so if we have here 2, then is all of this. This, this area, from minus infinite to 2, right? And the probability that eta is less or equal than minus 2 is all of this. 
minus this. Then at the end, we get the probability that eta is between minus 2 and 2, right? But what can we see from here? What can we see? We can see that uh, let's express all of this just using this. What do I mean? So look, we know the probability. So we know this. How do we express this using this? So this is just, let me write this in a different way. This is f of eta in the point two minus, look, this probability is this, this area from here, right? But this area is exactly the same to this area. To this area from here, right? So I can take one, one minus this, and this is going to be this. Okay, one, so the area, the, the complete area is one, right? So I take the complete area minus this, all of this, up to two, and then I get this, right? And since this is equal to this, then this is going to be just one, sorry, one minus, uh, one minus F eta in the point two. Right. So this is the same, this is the same of f eta in the point minus 2. Because this is an even function, right? This, this function is even. The area from uh, to, to that side is, 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 is exactly the same to this, to this area here, right? Good, so what do we get? We get uh, 2 times this function minus 1. Now we need to find the value of this function. And to find the value of this function, we can look at any book of probability. I don't have a book of probability here, but I, I have this. And do I have this means? Yes, so look, there's a table that you can find on internet or in any book. In this table, uh, ah, yes. Be, before that, so what is this? This is uh, using the density. This is the integral from minus infinity to e to two of one over the square root of two pi e to the minus x squared over two dx. So all that we have to do now is to find this integral. This is not easy. So this is hard to find, and that is why all the values for that integral are over here on this table. Okay. So what do we need to find? the integral from minus infinity to two. So there's a table. Let me show you how this table works. There are two different kinds of tables. Uh, the first one shows, uh, uh, is going to show you the probability from minus infinity. So you have here this two that you have here. Let's say that this is x, okay? And here you will have the values of x in the following way, for example, here you have 1.5 and here you have 0 0.05. So if you want x, you, you want to find this value, this integral, for x being equal to 1.55, right? So we have 1.55, then the value is over here. Okay, and this is going to give you the, uh, the, the value of this integral from minus infinity to, uh, to, to x, right? Maybe like this, maybe, or, so this is the first kind of table that you can find, and you have to be careful which table you are using, right? Otherwise, you get a, a wrong answer. And in, a, in the second case, and that's the table that I have, uh, you have exactly the same, right? Like exactly the same, uh, the same values here, 1.5 and here 0 0.05. And here, you just have the value not from minus infinity, but from zero. So you will get, this is, the, this, is this, from zero to x, one over the square root of two pi, e to the minus d square, you have three ways of d square root two d and three. So here we have from minus infinity, here we have from zero. 
So if we have from zero, so we need from minus infinity. We need it from minus infinity, right? Because we need from minus infinity to two. If we find that value here, so if we know from zero, and this value is, for example, 0 0.4, then what is the value for from minus infinity? So again, if this is 0 0.4 from zero, then, uh, but I want to know from minus infinity, then what do I need to do with this number? So that I get here, the value for this. Yeah, and how much is that? Yeah, in any case. So what is this integral equal to? The integral from minus infinity to 0 of 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus t squared over 2 dt. It's like you should know it like that. No? So what is this? What does it, what does it represent? If we are talking about some random variable eta with a standard normal distribution, this is the probability that eta is less or equal than zero. So, is the probability that, that eta is over here? So, what is this area? Half, right? So, this is half. So, it means that if you found, if you have the value from zero to x, but you need from minus infinity, then, and you have 0 0.9, 0 0.4, then you have to write 0 0.9 here. Okay? I hope that's clear. Now, what do we need to find? We need to find in the value equal to, right? So let's find it. Huh? The standard normal distribution table, or something like that. So for two, we have. Uh, just a second. Okay, look, everyone, it's important. So look, we have uh, the table, right? We have here 2.0 and here we have 0, 0.00, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the value that we need, 0 0.477, right? But this is from zero. And, but this is from zero, yes. And I know that because I have it here, right? This is from zero. So this is the value. In my case, is 0 0.772. So this is going to be 0 0.9772. And the answer is going to be, so if you do that, the answer is going to be, let, I have it over here. Uh, 0 0.9544. So the probability that you get nines, so the number of nines that you get is from, uh, how many? Is from 440 and 1060, the probability that you get that uh, times, that number of nines, is 0 0.9544. So it's very high. It's almost one, right? That's it. So that is why the central limit theorem is very important. Because now you can compute. So if you have some experiment, if, if uh, you have some experiment if, in which you have a lot of trials, right? Here we have 10,000 uh, digits. So we are repeating this experiment 10,000 times then we can use the central limit theorem because we can approximate this, right, using the central limit theorem. We can find any probability that we want, okay? And from here, this is like the beginning of uh, statistics, right? So next semester, you will start with something like this. So you already know how to find probabilities. Now you have to look at what kind of distribution you have, right? So this is very important, right? Now, uh, yeah, it's like this. Any questions? Okay. So,
Okay. We have that. So this is the answer. Let me run over here. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. So I just told you this because maybe, maybe next year uh, uh, your teacher is going to ask you about this, th this theory, the, the Morat theory. I don't know, maybe. This is just the central limit theory. It's exactly the same. Right? It's not exactly the same, but it's somehow exactly the same. Okay? Uh, we just didn't have time to prove it. Okay? We use it, but that's because, okay, so the, the, this is a special case of the central limit theorem, right? So in this case, we are using it. Yeah, because we are, we are talking about the Bernoulli distribution. If we talk about Bernoulli distribution, right, here we have that uh, psi i, as uh, this distribution, then somehow we are talking about the Moivre uh, Laplace theorem. Right? Only because of that. If if we change this to Poisson or something, that's it. This is central limit theorem only. Okay. All right. Good. Now, next uh, exercise number two. What do we have? Tak. We have that uh, when typing an stenographer makes a mistake. So the probability that we make a mistake when, when we type something is 0 0.00. How many seconds? One, two, three, four, five? No, okay. only three. Uh -huh. This is the probability of making a mistake. Probability of making mistake. Mistake. Uh, and find the, an approximate value for the probability that when typing 10,000 characters. So we type 10,000 characters. What is the probability? that we make no more than three mistakes, right? Okay, so 10,000 times, so we have some experiment again. We have 10,000, uh, we are repeating this experiment 10,000 times independently, right? And uh, the probability that we make mistake, that we have I don't know, success, they say success in this case, right, is very low, it's like this. So what is the probability that uh, the number of mistakes that, that we make is no more than three? So for example, if xi is the number of mistakes, then what do we need to find? We need to find the probability that xi is less or equal than three, right? The probability that the number of mistakes is no more than three. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay. Now, there are two different ways to look at this. The first one, of course, is the central limit theorem, and this is the first thing that, that you see and that you should see. But, and you can apply it, and you will get the answer, so more or less the same. But there's something else. You remember that when we, uh, when we prove, so when we talk about the Poisson distribution, we actually talk about the Poisson limit theorem, This is from the last semester, right? What was the limit theorem? And what was that? That if we have the binomial distribution, right? If if so, if we have n choose k, p to the k, and y minus p to the n minus k. So if we have the binomial distribution, yes, but n is very uh, uh, big and p is very small, right? So the, uh, the number of experiments that, that we have tends to infinity and the probability is very small. And also, NP tends to some variable lambda, right? Then all of these tends 
to e to the minus lambda, uh, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k over lambda factorial. Right? And so this is the binomial distribution, this is the Poisson distribution. That's how we get it, right? And this is the condition. Now look what we have here. We have that p is, this is small, this is p, and n is this big, right? And if we multiply n p, what do we get? Five, right? So somehow the conditions for the Poisson limit theorem holds, right? Now we can apply the uh, the condition the uh, so we can apply this theorem here, the Poisson limit theorem, right? So it means that what do I want to say? I want to say the following: that psi, so the number of mistakes that we have has Poisson distribution with parameter five. So how do we find the probability that xi is less or equal than 3? If I know that xi has Poisson distribution. Hmm? OK, wait. So, what is the probability that xi is equal to k if xi has Poisson distribution with parameter lambda? This. e to the minus lambda, lambda to the k, uh, k factorial here. Here is k factorial. So, Yes. Right? That's it. So what do I have to do? I have to write this. I have to, instead of writing lambda, I have to write 5. Instead of writing k, I have to write, well, the value that I have over here. At the end, I'm not going to do it. This is, going to, this is going to give you about 0 0.29. So that's the probability. Again, you could have used the central limit theorem, but here makes more sense to use this one, the Poisson limit theorem, right? Because this is a limit theorem. That's the deal. There are three limit theorems. The central limit theorem, the Poisson limit theorem, and the Moivre-Laplace uh, Laplace limit theorem, OK? We know the Poisson limit theorem and the central limit theorem. And the moral of plus is just in some kind, somehow in a special case of the central limit theorem. Yeah, lambda is just some number which is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. Great. That was exercise number two. Maybe you need to write. I don't know. So, any questions? Okay, exercise number three. What do we have for it? Uh huh. One thousand eighty eighteen hundred. Uh, dice. So we have interesting dice are thrown. Find an approximate value for the probability that the total number of occurrences of two and six is no less than uh, 620. So let's say that psi number of times we get uh, two or six. Hmm? Yeah, but I I meant here or because we have only one die, right? So so no, it, we have no. Yeah, so I have is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if I have two dice and I throw two dice, or if I have one die and I throw it two times, right? 
So uh, you can think about that, like you have only one die, and you throw this, this die 1,800 times, right? And you look at the number of two or six. I mean, two and six means that you have other, uh, or, yeah, two or six, right? Okay, I think it's clear. Now, what do we need to find? We need to find that the probability that, uh, what? The probability that psi is no less than, so the psi is greater or equal than 620. Right? So this is exactly the same that we did before. Uh, do you want to do it? Come on. I'm not on board. <laughs> All right. You'll have to do it next week. Don't, don't forget, we have the test on, on, on Friday, by the way. Friday? No, wait. On Thursday, yes. At, at I don't remember what time, but. I haven't. I'll tell you. Let me. Okay. At, at the end of the seminar, we will discuss everything. I will give you your questions also and so on. How do we find this? T tell me. What is the first thing that we have to do? Well, maybe, yes. Doesn't matter. It's the same. Do you understand what it's the same? Okay, imagine that you have one die and you throw it two times, right? So you get some value from one to six and some value from one to six. Now imagine that you have two dice. And you throw them just once. So you get two values, one value from one to six and another value from one to six. Well, there's no difference. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sorry, no. Mm -hmm. No, no. It, yeah, I have. I have to write or. Yes. Yeah, I need to change that. In Russian, it was e, e and I don't know why I translated it also like that. Anyway, um, so what do we need to do? Hmm? Which variable? So we have xi. So we have to calculate the the value i So that's the first thing, right? We know that xi is xi1 plus xi2 plus xi1800. This is the first thing, right? Now, uh, what next? So the expected value, right? So the expected value for xi i. So what is the, the distribution of xi i? Bernoulli with uh, which parameter? We can have two or six. Two or six, right? One over three. So the, uh, the expected value of psi i is 1 over 3. By now, it's clear? Yeah. OK. So the expected value of psi is? Eighteen hundred over three, right? Six hundred. Yes. Again, yes, because don't forget. This is just the, the expected value of this is the expected value of this sum. So this is the sum from one to n of the expected value of psi i. So you sum up this expected value many times. Now, what do we, what do we find? The variance, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the variance of psi i, which is 
So Xi i uh, has Bernoulli distribution. So the variance is p times one minus p. P in this case is one over three. And one minus p then is two over three, yes? So it means that we have two over nine. And then the, the variance of Xi is just uh, right. So what is this? Huh? Forty. Four hundred. Right. Yeah. So now we just do the following, right? So xi minus the expected value of xi over the square root of, of the, the variance. Is, yeah. Uh, less or equal than 620 minus the expected value of xi, which is 600, over uh, the square root of 400, right? 20. So this is the probability that xi minus the expected value of xi over the square root of the variance of xi is less or equal than 20 over 21. Right. So what's next? Mm -hmm. So distance. So this is the distance. So this is equal, exactly the same. And by the way, I forgot to uh, to tell you this function. This function again. So minus infinity to x of one over the square root of two pi p to the minus t square over two dt. This is denoted like this. Okay. So, if, for example, you don't you don't have the table, but you need to write the answer. You can just write the, the following. Okay. That's it. So, and you can find the value for that. I think I have it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will have the table over here, so you you will see it. You will look. Tag, where where is that? Uh, wait. Uh, here we had <laughs> like this, like this, right? Sorry, I got confused. Yeah, we had we need greater. So what can we do? This is just one minus the probability that this. is less or equal than one, all right? And now, so the answer is one minus f of one. And f of one is, so the answer is 0 0.1587. That's the probability. Questions? Any questions? So as you can see, it's not hard at all. It's it's very easy. You just need to understand the algorithm here, and that's it. The difficult thing here is the theory, how to prove the central limit theory. That's the difficulty, but the exercises are, are simple. Exercise number four. What do we have? Uh, what do we have? Let me see. A dice is rolled 1,000 times. As n is the sum of points that we get. Well, in this case, n is 1,000, right? Uh, we need to find x1 and x2 such that the probability that 
Sn is between x1 and x2 is 0 0.95. All right, that's, this is something different, right? Now, so before we, we knew this, and we had to find this. Now if we know this, and we have to find this. So it's the same, but the other way. What is the problem here? That we have x1 and x2, so we have two different values. That's, that's not good, right? Because we have one equation, I mean one formula and two uh, variables. There's no way to solve that. But what do we know about so any random variable? That if we, if we uh, repeat this experiment infinite number of times, then we know that the number of successes that we get is about the expected value of this, right? So if you have xi and you know that the expected value, or, and you know the expected value of xi, then you know that if you repeat this experiment infinite number of, of times, the value that you get is about the expected value of psi. So we, we can say that this is the probability that the expected value of Sn minus some epsilon and between the expected value of Sn plus some epsilon. And now all that we have to do is to find this epsilon here. All right? And this should be 0 0.95. That's it. So uh, we need to find this exception. How do we do that? Uh, the same, right? So the same. So we need to find the probability. And here we have Sn. Of course, if the first thing that we have to do is to put Sn minus the expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn, right? So Sn minus the expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn. And then we do exactly the same to both sides. So here we have expected value of Sn minus epsilon minus expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn. And here we have expected value of Sn plus epsilon minus expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn. Yeah. So what can we see? We can see that uh, we have here plus and minus, we have plus and minus. So, we get here the probability that we have minus epsilon over the square root of the variance of Sn less or equal than Sn minus expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn. This less or equal than epsilon over the square root of the variance of Sn. Now what do we need to find? We need to find the expected value of Sn and the variance of Sn, right? So what is the expected value of Sn? To find that, we need to, find, to, we need to understand what is Sn. Sn is the number of uh, points that we got, right? So we can express this as xi1 plus xi2 plus xi n. In this case, n is thousand, but it doesn't matter, okay? So what is xi? Who can tell me? Xi i. If Sn is the number of points, the sum of the number of points, then Psi i is the number of points that we obtain in the in in the in the in the i-th term. Like how, how to say it? so? This is the number of number of points, and the i-th trial. Right. So for psi i is just the number of points that we get in the first time. Right. Then we draw a second die. Right. Yeah. Then we draw this. Uh, this, this die once again, and then psi 2 is the number of points that we get in the second trial, and so on, right? At the end, we get the number of points that we get, that we have um, at all, right? 
Now, what is the expected value of psi i? What are the possible values for psi i? So if you throw a die, what are the possible values that you can get? Yeah, right, from one to six. So, and what is the, pr the probability of each of these values? One over six, so this is just one over six. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, right? That's it. Ah, points, it means when you throw a die, you can get one of these numbers. So this is the point that you get. Mm -hmm. You have five. Psi i. Can you give me the psi i again? Psi i is uh, what number you got? Mm -hmm. Then you throw a second die and then you sum up the value. Right? Okay. So, uh, I forgot what to say. Expected value of psi i. Mm -hmm. I think this is 3.5. Uh, and then we need to find the variance of psi i. This is the expected value of psi i squared minus the expected value of psi i, all of this squared. So what is the expected value of psi i squared? What do I need to change here? So this is xi i, and here I'm finding the, the expected, all of this is square, right? So one over six, one is square plus two is square plus three is square plus four is square, sorry, plus five is square plus six is square, right? Minus 3.5 square. This is about 292. Yeah. Yes. So we have the variance of psi and we have the expected value of psi. Now what is going to be the expected value of S and so so let's continue. Yeah. So we have this. And this is equal here. Probability of, we have the expected value minus the expected value of the square root of the variance. So what is the variance? Is this times n, right? So we multiply this by n. So it's the square root of n times the square root of 2.92. Yes? We have Sn minus expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn. Hmm? Yes, we already know n, right? So this is, we can change it. We know that n is 1,000, so this is the, the square root of 1,000. And we know that all of this is 0 0.95. So, but what is this? This is the probability that this random variable, and we know that this random variable tends to a uh, random variable with a standard normal distribution, right? So this is equal to a phi, a phi of epsilon over the square root of 1,000 times the square root of 2.92 minus this, right? So, but we already found that this is 2 times minus 1, yeah? And we know that this is 0 0.95. So that's it. We need f of epsilon over the square root of 
Dao sun times the square root of 292 is what? 0 0.95 plus 1 over 2. Right? So this is 1.95 over 2. Now let's look at the table. Let's look at the table. So what do we get? Just a second. So first of all, we get that um, so what number is that? Zero point two five. So this is zero point nine seven five. Okay. So we need to find now in the table, right? So if this is the table, there are some where this value. 0 0.975, such that I have this, right? So I can find the, the value for this. And this is going to be, so this x that I get here is going to be equal to this. And for that value, we have that x is equal to uh, 1.9, Okay, so what do I get? That 1.96 is equal to epsilon or the square root of thousand times the square root of 290. That's it. Epsilon is equal to uh, 1.96 times the square root of thousand times 2 times 92. So epsilon is, let me show you, I have epsilon here, is about. 106. Right? But this is not what we were looking for. We were looking for x1 and x2. So what is x1? The expected value was 3.5 times n. So 3,500. Right? So x1 is 3,500 minus 106 and x2 is 3,500 plus 106. That's it. So the numbers that I, I write here, so here I will write uh, 306, 306, 3,606 3, and 3,000 uh, sorry, here for uh, here is 300, uh, 3,606 and 400 here. No, 394, 94. Anyway, all right. that's it. <coughs> Questions? No? Okay, great. And the last one, right, the last one, because we still have one more, but that's a long one, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, the last one that we have for today, and we have at all, is uh, let me see which one. Uh -huh. How many times we have to throw a die, right? So how many times we must throw a die? If we want that with probability greater than 0 0.975, okay, let me go here. So how many times? We We want the following. We want that the probability that SN is greater or equal than 4,500 is greater than 
as n again is the sum of points, the sum of numbers that you get, right? So if you have a die, if you have a die, right? And you throw a die, you write the number, and you sum up the values that you get. How many times you need to throw this die such that the sum that, that you get is at least 4,500 with this probability? So we need to find n, right? So we need to find n. Exactly. So how do we do that? Exactly the same, right? So this is the probability. Sn minus expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn is uh, greater or equal than, well, let's find, we know that the expected value of Sn, we already found it before, it was 3.5 times n, right? 3.5, uh, where? Mm -hmm. Look, the variance of Sn is equal to n times the variance of Xi, right? So that is why we have square root of n. So this is 3.5 times n. 3.5 is the variance of the variance of xi. We found it, right? And we found that the, the expected value, sorry. And the variance of Sn can to be n times 292, right? We already found that before. So that's it. We need to write that over here. Uh, Four thousand one five hundred minus three point five times n over, and now I can write here the square root of n, right? Uh, times the square root of two ninety two. And I need this to be greater than zero point nine seventy five. Okay. Uh, but I have here greater or equal, and to apply the the limit, I need less or equal, right? So this is so this probability is one minus the probability that S n minus expected value of S n over the square root of the variance of S n is less or equal. Look, we have greater or equal, and we have less or equal. Of course, I have to write less, strictly less. But it doesn't matter here because we are talking about we are going to find this integral, so minus infinity to x. It doesn't matter if we have less, strictly less, or equal. It's absolutely the same, right? Uh, so I have uh, 4,500 minus 3.5n over square root of n, square root of 2, minus 2. Zero, this will be greater. At zero point ninety five. Okay, so what's next? I need uh, I need to find such value. So if I if if I have here one minus this, then I can put this probability there and this number here. And I get that the probability that Sn minus expected value of Sn over the square root of the variance of Sn is less or equal than this. Should be less than 0.05. Uh, just a second. Y minus. Uh huh. Okay. So uh, we need to find this, right? How do we find it? The same. We have to look at the table. 
and we look for 0 0.05 thus so for 0 0.05 we obtain 0. Point, wait but this is from aha uh -huh, I have to look at so this is 0 0.519 Oh, probably 0 0.05 to x. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. So I need this probability, this number. To be, if I want this probability to be less than this, then I, I need this number to be less than this number. And that's it. You can solve it. You have some just equation here. So this is, uh, let's say that this is t, and this is t here. This is going to be t squared. You can solve it, and the answer is going to be um, n should be greater or equal than 1,320 times. So this is the number of times that you need to throw a die if you want to get at least the sum of the points should be at least uh, 4,500 with this probability. That's it, we finished. Congratulations. Questions? No questions, everything is clear, perfect.